Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife video for you. And today I have one that I know you guys are really going to enjoy watching and I am not going to enjoy making because this is the third one of these I've done. I think I did one about nine, ten months ago. Uh, there can be only one. This is, if I could only pick one knife from my collection, what, what would it be? And we're just going to go down and I'm just going to eliminate them. Uh, one by one or two by two. I have no real plan for this. I think they're better when there's no really good plan for it. The only planning I made is there are no smaller knives in this because I always wind up eliminating those. Uh, that's uh, There's a few that are fairly small, but that three inch and under thing, if you live in a state where or a locale where you have to have that, then, uh, you know, uh, then, uh, sorry for you. Uh, I do live in an area where some parts of the city I'm supposed to have under three inch. And I absolutely always completely abide by that. Uh, but it's they're not knives they're going to be my only one so i did eliminate a lot of those i also just chose one from each manufacturer um i i tried not to double up there's a couple you know like zt and kershaw they're they're basically the same company but they're still a, a, a technically different brands there's some that are there's a couple of protex on here but one is a drop fair and forge protec you get what i mean this is a fair and forge that's a fair and forge you get what i mean but i'm, I'm still like their designs but made by other companies so I'm, i tried to abide by that one per manufacturer sort of thing and i whittled it down to 20 before we started because i don't want this video to be 45 minutes it it still may wind up being that who knows because i these are agonizing uh videos to make and also I'm usually really careful about like writing down prices so I can tell you guys uh, as I pull them up. I will, I will say when I recall it, but I really didn't want price to be a factor in this. So I didn't want a list of prices in front of me because it would influence my final decision that I don't want it. Nothing here is too insane. I mean, it, yeah, it is. But it, like, I think the most expensive thing is the that hinders like 650 the way it sits there. But I We'll get to that when I talk about it. it. It doesn't really matter. The scale is the big expensive option. It's more like a four. Most of these things are four or five hundred dollars at, at, at the absolute most. A lot of them are way cheaper than that. So, way cheaper than that. So let's get going. Uh, I'm just gonna keep eliminating these until we get down to one, and um, it's it's tough to do. So I'll list off all the knives first. So I guess that's probably a better way to start. So we have the. Hinder XM18 with the non-flipper fullered spear. We have the ZT0562 tie, which is basically ZT's version of the Hinder XM18. We have the Spartan Harsey folder. We have a pretty new arrival, but one that I really, really, really like. This is the Ferrum Forge Stinger. We have the only automatic on here, I do believe, the Microtech LUDT. We have the Adam Purvis Progeny V2 the Southern Grind Spider Monkey, the Spider Co. Spidey Chef, the uh, the Benchmade Super Freak. We have this all on camera, right? Yeah, okay. I'm trying to look through my own lens here as I'm doing this. Uh, we have the Protec Malibu. We have the Adam Demko 8020. Demko Knives 8020. I'm sorry, I always say that wrong. Uh, we have the Drop Protec Ferrum Forge uh, Mordax. We have the the previous winner, the Three Rivers Manufacturing Adam, we have the Wee Knives Malice, the Best Tech Malware, the Kershaw Bare Knuckle in 20 CV, it's a Smoky Mountain Knife Force exclusive, we have the uh, Quiet Carry Waypoint, the Hogue Decca, the Chris Reeve Incosi Tanto with the my Carta inlays and the Cold Steel 8010, also an Andrew Demko design. Wow, I got through all those. Only a couple little stumbles. I'm we're gonna go with that. Um, so let's get going and start eliminating knives of these 20. What what could be my only? What will be the first one I eliminate? This is one of the hardest ones because I feel like it's an insult to the company and it isn't, but um, what's the first one I'd get rid of? I literally made a conscious effort to put no thought into this until I sat down. Um, I got to go the malware. I love the knife. I love the designers. They're great, great guys. Zelric42 on, on the YouTubes. You probably knew him as the YouTuber before. You knew him as a knife designer. It's a great design. Very well executed by Best Tech. It made it to the 20 on the table. That's compliment. Everything here is really good. Um, if it made it to this to this point on the table, but it's just a bit too aggressive looking. Um, I love it. 
I love carrying it. I love using it. I've actually been carrying it a lot more lately. Uh, but at the end of the day, it looks like that. You know, I like Warren Cliffs, so I, I, I like the way it looks. But, you know, to average humans, um, it, it's not outstanding. It, it, it scares people. But I you know, like the Ford Finger Choil, the, 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 the Ergos are great. It's a really good knife, but... Oh, really sorry, it's Harold, but that's the first one out. Um, second one out, because it's the one I was debating on. Wow, I really like this knife. I just actually had it in my pocket yesterday and used the crap out of it. But I got to say the 8010. It's just a bit wide in the pocket. That pocket clip's kind of obnoxious. And um, again, a great freaking knife. Yeah, I didn't use it yesterday. It's all marked up. Um, But I, I'm working on my truck with my cold steel but uh which was fun but no i i just don't think i could it, the weight is pretty significant the price isn't bad it's like two i think these are like uh two 220 230 something like that um or 200 i don't know but uh, again i'm trying not to make price be part of this but um it is a really good stout knife but i don't think i need anything this stout to be my only one because this would be the only knife i could carry all the time every day and i do carry this a lot and i do enjoy it it is a very useful 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 tool but no i gotta gotta put that as the next one oh and this i have no idea for the next one uh what would i eliminate I'm going to eliminate another knife that I really like. I have quite a bit of money into this because I upgraded the parts to Timascus because Adam Purvis allowed me to. So that is, so it gives it away. Uh, I'm going to say the Progeny V2. Uh, I love the blade shape. I love the Ergos. And yeah, I put these Timascus parts on it. So it looks very, very, very pretty. Uh, it is a fairly expensive knife now, but even in the standard with just the regular titanium parts, it still looks great. Um, the reason why I'm going to eliminate this is because I often wear uh, thicker pants, 5'11 tactical jeans, or a couple of the pair of jeans that are pretty heavy, and, and the, uh, the pocket clip just doesn't work that great on them. It's just not much clearance, and yeah, that's why I'm going to eliminate this one. So uh, that's off the table. Uh, next up, wow, we're getting down into really no thought about um what would i eliminate next out of these that's a great knife but i'm gonna i'm gonna go with the mordax because it's really thick behind the edge and, and there is a company or a guy that does uh regrinds on these and hollow grind i kind of resisted that for a while because i'm always like i'm a reviewer i want it stock but i think i am actually going to get the hollow grind on this if i had the hollow grind it might make it the action on this thing is just stupid good. Um, just stupid good. It's so much fun to fiddle with, but at the end of the day, it's kind of thick behind the edge. It's 20 CV. I have a lot of other knives on this table that are 20 CV and a little bit thinner behind the edge. And um does have a bit of a pocket pecker. God, I can't believe this one's going out that early, but... I kind of actually threw this in as a ringer. I thought it would make it to like top four, but when I sit here and look at them, and it's not inexpensive. I think these are like 240 bucks or something like that. Again, I'm trying not to make price be part of the equation, but it's always in the back of my mind. Next. Next, what would I eliminate? Part of the reason why I did, I'm doing this again so soon is my buddy Mike, uh, we were chatting and he said, wow, you're, your taste of knives has changed so much over the last year, and I and it has. That's why I wanted to redo it. So I know the Adam one last time, but I thought about redoing it because yeah, he's right. My I do like bigger, heavier stuff now. Um. That being said, I think the next one I eliminate is the Ho Deca. Uh, this one is not my favorite version, but we're gonna pretend that it is. I got this, you know, for the channel for size comparisons and stuff, and it's. It's the more common drop point version. I had a Warren Cliff with the blue lava. I actually think I liked that a little bit better. Uh, but even so, it's it's my favorite of the Axis Lock knives. You'll see it's, it's only two on here. The, my favorite action of the Axis Lock knives. Obviously not my favorite overall because that one's still sitting there. But um, 
I think Hogue does a great job with this Axis style lock, the Able lock, they call it. A little bit thicker springs, and it works great. And it is a fantastic freaking knife. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't know. It's just, it's not ergonomically perfect, and it's screwtastic, as I always like to call it, with all the extra screws on it. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go DECA next. And it's not, it's not really big enough to float my boat. Yeah, we're going to go DECA next. Um, who, uh, what next? This knife should be happy just to be in here because I literally, I've only had it for like a week and I, I really love it and I wanted to put it in here because I love it that much. But I didn't think it would last too terribly long, but I still, I love the Ferrum Forge Stinger. This is a great freaking knife. They're still available on their website. Go check them out. Go to ferrumforge.com or I think even Blade HQ and a few other places have them. Nitro V Steel. The Ergos are superb. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it for a minute. I talked myself out of it. Live television, everybody. I was going to take it out. It's only 90 bucks. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it on here for a minute. Um, that means I have to eliminate something else. It's also a Ferrum Forge, so I guess we're staying in the, in the family. Uh, this is the Wee Knives Malice. Um, love the way it looks. Absolutely. That, that flame anno is freaking great. The ergos are great. The blade is great. It's such a good freaking knife. But, yeah. It's, what, 280, something like that. And uh, the, if they'd have done more weight relief on this, it would have lasted longer. But it's a pretty heavy knife for what it is. God, I, I really like it, but... Oh, the, it's so smooth. Am I going to put this one back in, too? No, I'm going to stick with the decision. I, oh, the action is so... I have always forget. I don't carry this as much as I should, and when I take it out, the action is so smooth that it always surprises me. Um... And uh, next up, what would I eliminate? Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, now I guess I'm going to go Stinger. It is going to go this one. But I, I love this one so much. But it's, it's, it's just at the end of the day, I like a more solid, heavy feeling knife now. I used to always really like lightweight stuff. It probably if I'd have done this, if this was in, if this existed a, like nine months ago when I did that video, this would have made it way, way, way farther. But my tastes have just changed a little bit. So, um. Yeah, as I said, Nitro V, awesome ergos, great value, ninety bucks. Buy one, absolutely buy one of these things. It's gonna be in my top ten videos at the end of the year, absolutely one hundred percent for sure. It's just a, a really really cool knife, nice deep carry clip. Um, but yeah, it's, it's gonna go away for now. Um, next up, I gotta get rid of the auto as much as I love the LEDT and it's really really good match to slicey dicey purple as you can see because it almost disappears in the background um i love i love autos um but you don't you can't carry them everywhere uh so i have to i have to get rid of the LEDT. great knife though oh my god such a slicey blade very nice simple blade shape uh, great ergonomics it's just a, and it's freaking purple even if it's not purple you can get it a bunch of different colors um but a really awesome auto but at the end of the day it's a really awesome auto. Even though it's an out the side, that's a bit less offensive than an OTF, but yeah, got to let that one go. Next up, what are we going to eliminate? Um, wow, this is a shot because this is another one that is going to be on top 10 knives at the end of the year list, and I still really love, but if I could be only one, it's going to be the Protec Malibu. Um, I love this thing. It's such a good knife. It has all that fun fidgety stuff that you saw in the Mordax. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think for my only one, I'd want something a little bit bigger. This is a, what, three? I'm doing this off camera. Yeah, like three and a quarter inch blade. I do still, I, that's a perfectly adequate blade length, but um, it doesn't have a huge pocket clip. I love so much about I love so much about the Malibu, but yeah, I think this will be the next one to go. This is the uh, Warncliffe version, by the way. Um, 
there is another. Uh, next up, what would I eliminate? Um, hmm. Da, 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 da. I feel like I should have like music to play behind this while I'm thinking. Um, probably the Kershaw Bare Knuckle. This is the like I said, the 20 CD, really cool one. I I think the regular one is fine too. Uh, in what 14 C20 and whatever they are, but uh, I do like this one a little bit better because it's 20 CV and it's you know uh, the the black instead of the gray. Um, the action on it is really really nice. I I love so much about this, um, but at the end of the day, I don't know. My tastes have changed a little bit. I'm not sure I'd want to carry a Kershaw every day for the rest of my life. This is uh, about 90 90 bucks, 99 dollars. I think they are a little under 100. Um, and they're on sale a lot too, but uh, yeah, it is a dealer exclusive, but I'm including it in here because their Smoky Mountain is going to keep them in stock forever and ever. As long as Kershaw will make them, they'll still have them. Uh, they've definitely built a ton of them. Uh, next up. Now remember, this has to be forever. Only knife that I have in my pocket every single day forever. Oh, another shocker that's going to go to the Quiet Carry Waypoint. I love the Waypoint. It's Vanex. It's completely, this the whole knife is completely, utterly corrosion resist, corrosion proof pretty much. I soaked it in salt water for hours and it was fine. Um, but I think at the end of the day, it's just a bit too dainty. I really do like how slicey it is. It's got the nice hollow grind and it's a Vanex blade and it's the heat treat seems to be great on them. And they're, they're great freaking knives. Um, Again, another one that's going to be on the top 10 at the end of the year, but it ain't making the cut here. I think that's the last one. Yeah, none of the other ones here are on the top 10 at the end of the year because they are, they're all older than that. But again, this is live television, everybody. I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking alongside of you guys. So I should have started a betting site alongside this so you guys could guess which one was next. We'll tighten stuff up a little bit now since we've lost a few. And it'll give me a couple of seconds to think. Um, we'll do this. So what? what is next? Hoo um, What is next? I think last time it came down to these two. We'll see if it does uh, this time. I watched them back, but I also have a very terrible memory. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go Super Freak. Uh, I love the Benchmade Super Freak. It's a great knife, but it, it, you can only get it in M4 with a coated blade. I love the M4, but if, if they made this with a non-coated blade, it would go a lot farther in this contest, I'm just saying. Um, the Blacked Out Blade is what that's it's amazing a knife with a blacked out blade made the top 20 it's amazing that it made it this far because i really don't like coated blades uh but this one this one's gotta go i just don't like scratches and scuffs and everything benchmade does a great job of their coating I, I use this thing and there's no marks on it but still it's just i don't like the look of it yeah that's gone oh wow this is getting difficult now um I guess next up, and this is just kind of logic situation with the 0562 tie because uh, I I have another full titanium hinderer. This is a Hinder XM18 design, basically based off of that. I'd rather have the real thing. So um, this is a great freaking knife, though. I've just recently started carrying it more lately because uh, I've I have too many hinderers and I kind of almost forgot about it for a bit, I guess, but forgot how much I liked it. But ZT did a superb job with this. They're like, what, 280? And uh, for the, I would get the full tie. Uh, they have the carbon one too. The carbon one I know everybody loves as well, but I've handled both and I really like the full tie better. That noise. Woof. Love that noise. Yeah, gotta go ZT. So I was gonna say we're out of regular, what you would call regular production, but we're not. We still have the. Still have the uh, the spider co in there. Um, next up, what would I what would I eliminate? Um, 
wow, holy crap, I can't believe I'm saying this, because right now, right now I'm going to say unequivocally, right now this is my favorite knife I own. But it's a semi-custom mid-tech design. I would always, like if something broke, I know he'd take care of it, but it might take a minute. Remember, this is just something I have to keep in my pocket all the time. Holy crap, I can't believe I'm, I'm going to say the 80-20. God, I love this thing. This is... Like I said, right now, this is, I will say, my favorite knife that I own. I freaking love this thing. Uh, it, spoiler alert, when you see my most carried knives for August of 2020, this this is it. This is number one. Um, I freaking love this thing. Um, this is a 3D blade. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say that just because of the, it's a little heavy and just, just that, you know, that it's, they only made it. They're in mid tech. They're making a, a decent amount of them, but yeah, I'm gonna say this, which is really weird. You know what I'm gonna do to make it feel better? I'm gonna put it right in my pocket because I was actually carrying the Spidey Chef today. But we're gonna switch out. I'm gonna put the eighty twenty in my pocket to make it make it feel better that it got eliminated. Um, next up, uh. Like I said, my tastes have changed. The final two are still in here, but I'm not sure they're going to make it to the end. I think I would go next up. God, another knife. This was my most carried knife of last month, and it's in the list for this month. Uh, but I got to go with the Harsey. It's just kind of big. Um, like I said, I, I gravitate more towards larger knives now, but this is a uh, you know, four-inch blade. It's not heavy. I don't mind the weight at all, but... This is based purely on size. I love this. It's not a custom by any stretch of the imagination, but they did do a different combo. You can't normally get these DLC with the DLC or with the non-DLC blade, but you can call them and ask them nicely and they'll do it. And that's what they did for me. But um, God, I love this knife so much. But again, this is there can be only one, and this is just a little, just a little bit big. So now we're down to five. Five. What would I eliminate next? Oh. Huh. Wow, this is going to be another shocker because I know you guys know I'm a giant Hinderer fan. You probably expected the Hinderer to wake it to the end, and I, I did as well. I kind of half thought of what the final two might be, but it isn't. I'm going to... Eliminate the XM18. Now, this is a full titanium, and this is how I would want. Uh, this is how I like my hinders, is non-flipper, full titanium. That's, I think, the best way to go. I have some others that aren't. Um, but I don't know. At the end of the day, a little heavy. Do I need something that, that beefy? Yeah, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of the hinder. Holy crap. This hurts my soul. The two, like, I've, I've just eliminated, like, three of my favorite knife companies in the last three, and there's still four left. What is wrong with me? What is, what is going on in my brain? Was it the COVID? Was it, are the concussions catching up with me? What is happening in my head holes right now? Um, four. Down to four. Um, I'm going to say the spider monkey. Um, I love this thing a lot. Uh, this is the, you know, the regular drop point blade. I've had it for a long time and it, it is a very good friend, but, um, at the end of the day, I don't know. There's just nothing, uh, remarkable enough about it. It's an outstanding knife, but it's just so equally great everywhere that, um, there's just nothing that really like makes me want to keep it forever. There's nothing that just like grabs me. I have zero complaints about it. Ergos are great. Even the pocket clip I've gotten used to. I like the pocket clip now. It's it's just, uh, there's nothing that just goes, wow, I have to have this thing forever. So, um, and then there were three. And I'm going to say, yeah, last year's winner, not last year, but nine months ago's winner is, is out. Yeah, the Atom. I'm going to eliminate the Atom. It's, I still love this thing, obviously. It made it to the final three. It's slicey as all get out, 
but um, I don't know. I think my knife tastes have just gone a bit heavier, a, a bit more heavy duty. Not that this is a delicate knife by any stretch of imagination. It's an amazing EDC knife. But I think instead of having, a, I've, I've gone from carrying an EDC knife that I can do heavier duty stuff with to now I want a heavier duty knife that I can do EDC stuff with, if that makes any sense. I think that's just the way my tastes have gone. Uh, ear mileage may vary and that's completely fine. Um, oh, poor thing. You went through a lot the last nine months too. I had to take a chip out of the blakes. My wife threw it on the ground. Um, I have many, many, many scales for this. I do love that about it. You can just swap the outfits. This, these are the, uh, what do they call them? Uh, tech wood scales. Um, I have a bunch of different scales for this. So, uh, but yeah, I'm going to, I can't. Yeah. So we're now we're down to two. Last year's semifinalists and the newcomer, the Chris Reeve and Kosi Tanto. I'm going to open these up for this one. So I had a Sebenza 31 large. Just very, very recently sold it because I got this and I liked it better. Uh, but mostly because I really like Tanto blades. I'm just into Tantos lately. Um, and... They don't make the Sebenza 31 in the in a Tanto yet. Now, once they do, I I will, and probably it'll be S45 VN by then. I will probably upgrade. This is the S35 VN um, one. This is LC200, one of my absolutely favorite steels. I love the Spidey Chef. I love the shape of it. I love the way it feels in my hand. Now I have to make the final decision. What would I keep? I thought it was going to come down to maybe this and the Atom, or I actually thought the 80-20 and the Atom, but once you're sitting here holding them, it's like, oh, wow, one rest of your life. No, the 80-20 is just a bit too much. Um, huh. I'm going to go in Kosi, and it's, it's because it's a Tanto. I really, really, really like Tanto blades right now, and I find them extremely useful, and that is why. Um... And it was the only Tanto on here. Maybe it was kind of a ringer. Maybe I was a bit unfair to all the rest of them. But uh, love that blade shape. Works great for normal EDC kind of tasks. Works great. You have that second little point to cut boxes open and stuff like that. This one is the micarta inlay. If this was not the micarta inlay, I might change my mind. But um, I just really, really like the Ergos. And the Inkosi, if you're looking at all the upgrades on the Sebenza 31, it, Spence 31 has a lot of it's the Inkosi stuff. Uh, it's a lot that was pioneered on the Inkosi and, and put on the Sebenza. Um, yeah, that's why the Sebenza wasn't here. And I, and, and because I sold it, but I sold it because I like this better. Uh, but yeah, the, I got to go in Kosi. Chris Reeve and Kosi, that, that was not, not in my, my mind. Like I said, I tried not to think about it, but of course I did. This was not in my mind as, as my, there can be only one. Um, definitely was not expecting to eliminate a hinder with what was it six left. I'm I'm pretty surprised by that. But uh, yeah, there can be only one. It would be this my Chris Reeve large in Kosi Tanto. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Uh, I have not, but I've been Brian. Have a good one.